morning. Good morning, Bethel family. We are very thankful that you worship with us this morning. While we cannot be together in person, we can hear the word of God and hold each other in prayer from wherever we are. So let's take a deep breath together and invite the Holy Spirit to be among us. The spirit that connects us with one another. The spirit that allows us to see one another as human beings. We got less our flaws, imperfection, and the messy people we are. The spirit that gives life. The life that, when it is taken away from one, affects all of us. But we, before we start, um, I need to remind you that on January 31st at 7 p.m. we have uh, our congregational meeting. So it's going to be Zoom. All the information is in the bulletin. Please check the bulletin for the uh, time and the day and everything that you need to do. Or you can call the church. Um, the number is in the bulletin as well. So tomorrow is Martin Luther King Junior Day. And Martin Luther King is a big figure, very important fig figure in the civil rights movement. So I invite you as we're going through the week to think about where you see injustice. Where do you see yourself not standing up? For your neighbor. And what we can do. To see humanity in our neighbors. To see Christ in everyone that we encounter in our life. We are here to receive Christ. We are called to proclaim Christ, we are sent to show Christ. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. To the, water of, to the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. To the sea you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized, by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our open hymn is on page 5. Lord, speak to us that we may speak.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day, praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the inequity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the inequity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, here I am, Eli, said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord, let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. Here ends the first lesson. Our psalm for today is Psalm 139. Lord, you have searched me out, for Lord, you have known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You encompass me 
behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attend to it. For you yourself created my inmost part. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. You works, your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you. While I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of, of the earth, your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. My days were fashioned before they came to be. How deep I find your thoughts, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food. And God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, in that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Here ends the second lesson. Lord of all in need, search out all who cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression, chronic illness, unemployment, and loneliness with your radiant light. Send us as encouragement and signs of your healing. We specifically want to pray for Bob, Al, Michaela, Kevin, Sophia, Ken, Virginia, Don, Art, Jackie, Cecilia, Richard and Vicki, Ethel, Liam, Doris, Myrtle, Maria, Paul, Karen, Don, Tyler, Tom, Carol, Dolly, Ian, Kristen, Shirley, Pat, Connor, and family, Pamela, Susan, Neil, Deidre, John, and Colleen, Alyssa, Albert, Lisa, John, Sammy, Wayne, Jill, Judy, Gina and her mom, Melissa, and Jeffrey. We pray for hope, comfort, help, and healing as we deal with COVID-19 in our nation and in our world. We remember especially those who are most vulnerable to the disease, those who are caring for the sick and their families, and all of us who are struggling with the many challenges of everyday life in a pandemic. Give your church unity, Lord. Inspire all the baptized with the mind of Christ, where the church is powerful and where it struggles. Shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in us. 
We pray that you unite our nation. We are divided and in pain. Guide us in the discussions and actions that will resolve the conflicts that led to an attack on the U.S. Capitol. Give all branches of government your wisdom and strength to make decisions to bring us together in peace. We pray for all those who risk their lives for others in the line of duty. We ask that you bless them and their families as they serve to protect and help us. In particular, Lord, we pray for doctors, nurses, emergency responders, and healthcare workers who need renewal, strength, and our gratitude and recognition as they continue to serve at great personal risk and sacrifice for the sake of our, our health and our well-being. We pray for the drug rehabilitation work of New Life for Girls as they operate right across the street from us. We entrust to you, Lord, that the women in the program to your care and Lord, we ask that you would give them new life. We pray for our church, Lord, and for your guidance in all aspects of our ministry. For Elizabeth Eaton, presiding bishop of the ELCA. For Mark Homerud, the bishop of the Sierra Pacific Synod and the Synod staff. And for Bethel Lutheran Church, for Pastor Mitch, our church council, the BLCW board, all our church staff members and members, our path toward meeting again in person, and the people of Bethel as we worship and serve together. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Gospel according to John, the first chapter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. And he said to him, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. The sermon hymn is on page 9. O oh, that the Lord would guide my ways.
anything good come out of Nazareth? Having just invited Andrew and Peter to go to Galilee with him, Jesus found Philip, who then encounters Nathanael. Philip tells Nathanael that he has found the Messiah, the one whom Moses and the prophets wrote about, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael says, Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathanael's skepticism about the claims made for Jesus by his first followers allowed Jesus to suggest to Nathanael that his first impression was seriously flawed. In Jesus' day, Nazareth was a tiny village of 240 people clustered around a small spring built atop the steep ridge that forms the north side of the Estralion Valley. It was concealed in a saucer-like depression as if to emphasize its insignificance. The Hebrew scriptures never mention Nazareth, much less associated with messianic expectations. Nazareth then lent no special status to its inhabitants so when Philip told Nathanael that Jesus was the one of whom Moses and the prophets wrote, Nathanael concluded that Philip has to be mistaken. Jesus' messianic credentials were non-existent since he was the son of Joseph from Nazareth. In Nathanael's view, Jesus could be nothing more than a simple Jew from an insignificant village in Galilee. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nathaniel says. It is a question that is asked from a place of privilege. It is a question that draws a line between us and them. So let's pretend for a moment, just a moment, that we are not Nathaniel. Yeah, right. That we never judge a person based on their skin tone, their status, their accent. That we never treat one group with more privilege than others. I hope we know each other well enough that I can be honest with you. And for me, this is the example that comes to mind. Comparing the authorities' responses to what happened at the Capitol last week with what happened at the Black Lives Matter protest last year. Black and brown people, even when peacefully protesting, were met by the National Guard with rifles, flash grenades, and tear gas. In comparison, when white rioters invaded the Capitol, they were met. They were met by an underwhelming number of law enforcement personnel, personnel who were powerless to intervene effectively. And the Capitol Police chief had to plead for the National Guard to be sent in. I'm pretty sure the same way that pierces my, my soul, that pierces me to my soul, he does to yours too. But we never but we are never Nathaniel, are we? Philip has so little to go on, and yet he has everything. He has seen Jesus' face, so he finds Nathaniel who is skeptical. Philip does not launch into any into any logic. He he alludes to scripture, but does Naz but does not quote anything. He grabs him by the end, at least in my imagination he does, and says, come and see. That is the witness, right? In my Haitian culture, come and see is the invitation to witness one another. In the invitation, one is asked to be present and share in the moment with the other. One is asked to use the whole body as witness. 
in the invitation, one witnesses the other's burdens, joys, struggles, and most importantly, the other's holiness. Come and see. Is also a call to pay attention to one another, a call that says, I see you. I see your humanity that is intertwined with mine, and I am nothing without you. It is also a call to feel what the other feels. I feel the pain in you, the pain I caused by not standing up for you when you need me the most. I feel the joy in you, and I am rejoicing with you when you experience blessings. My sibling in Christ, as a community of faith, Philip is extending the invitation to come and see to all of us this morning. It is the invitation that God is not limited by place and space. There is a deeper truth to be discovered, a new relationship to be experienced, and a new life to be lived. A new life through our baptism that opens our eyes to see the bigger picture, the other side of the story. The story of those who are being treated unjustly by a system that is supposed to protect them. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? The answer is yes, indeed. Jesus does come out of Nazareth, and he is good. We know as the readers of John's Gospel that Jesus has another origin of which Nathaniel was unaware. While Jesus was the son of Joseph of Nazareth, he was also the word made flesh who was with God from the beginning and was God. Jesus' opponents never accept him. They are unwilling to see beyond the appearances. But through the Gospel of John, we know from the very beginning of the very true identity of Jesus. Though Nathaniel at first maintained that Jesus could not be the Messiah, his first encounter with Jesus changed his mind. Jesus' foreknowledge was what convinced Nathaniel that he was in the presence of an extraordinary individual whose origins, as far as Nathaniel knew them, did not do him justice nor define him. See, not just anything good comes out of Nazareth. The one who is good comes out of Nazareth. The one we encounter in the water of baptism and the word and sacrament. Jesus. Here in the invitation for you, my brothers and sisters, this morning, come and see that the Lord is good. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered into one, wherever you are, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. The closing hymn is on page 10. Here I am, Lord.
peace, be safe, be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.